Hi, my name is Tainou Chen, and I am an electrical engineering student. The title of my project is Origami Solar Tracking Concentrators. I have worked on this project over the past three years under the mentorship of Professor Ku. This project is still ongoing, meaning that results shown in this presentation are not final. Additionally, all of the code and results were done in MATLAB. The goal of this project was to explore how solar cells can be designed to minimize the amount of semiconductor required using a combination of different methods. Conventional solar cells use crystalline silicon, which is relatively cheap. However, there exist alternative semiconductors, which are both more efficient and more expensive. Gallium arsenide is one such option. This plot shows different semiconductors as well as their efficiencies throughout time. As we can see, Semiconductors are being continuously improved, and as time goes on, we can expect to have more options as well as more efficient ones to choose from. In addition to using more efficient semiconductor, another way we can improve the effectiveness of solar cells is to use a tracking array. Tracking arrays keep the concentrator pointed at the sun in order to increase light collection. Our current design allows the concentrator to tilt plus or minus 60 degrees relative to the perpendicular. This allows a total effective range of 120 degrees. A final way you can improve the effectiveness of solar cells is to use a concentrator. Concentrators allow light to enter from the top and redirect it to the bottom, where the semiconductor is located. Using a concentrator would allow you to collect light from a wider area while using less total semiconductor, which is typically the most expensive part. Optimizing the design of these concentrators was the main focus of this project. There are many concentrator shapes which can be used. This project mainly investigated parabolic designs. The first example is a simple parabolic concentrator, which is essentially just a single parabola. All rays parallel to the axis get reflected into the focus due to the properties of the parabola. However, if the rays are not parallel to the axis, even by a tiny bit, they will be reflected wildly. The second type of parabolic concentrator, which we mainly investigated, was a CPC or compound parabolic concentrator. This involves two parabolas rotated apart by the same angle and the overlap. This essentially increases the range of light angles which can be collected at the base. This slide shows how to obtain a compound parabolic concentrator from two parabolas. The first step, as previously mentioned, is to rotate the two parabolas in opposite directions by the same angle. The second step is to shift them so that the focus of each parabola intersects with the other parabola. The third and fourth steps involve cropping the concentrator at the top and bottom. This is the final shape of the concentrator. The bottom is the base, which is where the semiconductor would be located. An ideal real-world compound parabolic concentrator would essentially involve the two-dimensional design rotated around a center y-axis to create a circular design, similar to what is seen on the left. However, these are difficult to manufacture. We instead investigated using a polygonal design, as seen on the right. This replaces the circular base with a polygonal one, which would reduce the effectiveness of light collection, but would be easier to manufacture, as it would be possible to create these by simply cutting and folding a sheet of reflective material. However, rather than using a hexagonal-based concentrator, we used one with a square base, which would be even easier to manufacture at the cost of more efficiency. To create this concentrator, we stretched the two-dimensional concentrator along a depth axis to obtain something similar to the diagram on the left. We then filled in the space between using shapes as seen on the right to obtain something like this as our final three-dimensional concentrator. To summarize, this project investigated how to optimize light collection of square-based compound parabolic concentrators. We start off with two-dimensional designs and vary parameters to see how they affect light collection. We then move on to three-dimensional designs, using the most promising two-dimensional ones. We investigated the effects of changing these five parameters on how well the concentrator can collect light. The first parameter is the parabola coefficient, the second is rotation angle, the third is parabola separation, the fourth is base position, and the final is height factor. The first four variables are all independent, and the last one, height factor, is dependent on the other four. 
The two sides of the concentrator, what we call the sidewalls, and the base is at the bottom, where the semiconductor is. The first parameter is the parabola coefficient. As we increase this parameter, the shape of the parabolas change by getting wider. The second parameter is the parabola separation distance. As this increases, we use less of the bottom of the parabolas. The second parameter is the parabola separation distance. As this increases, the parabolas move further apart. As a result, less of the bottom of the parabolas will be used in the concentrator. The third parameter is the rotation angle of the parabolas. As this increases, the sidewalls of the concentrator get steeper. The fourth parameter is the base position. As this increases, we move the base of the concentrator upwards. When this has a value of zero, the base is located at the intersection of the two parabolas. When this has a value of one, it is located at the very top of the two parabolas. The final parameter is height factor. This determines how much of the sidewall we include in a concentrator. When this has a value of one, we include the full sidewall. When this has a value of zero, we include none of it. The final parameter, height factor, is dependent on the other four parameters. This is because of the tracking array that we use with our concentrators. If we set the height factor too high, the concentrators will intersect while they are rotating. If we set the height factor too low, the concentrators won't be collecting all of the light that they could be. In order to determine the optimal height factor, we use binary search. If the concentrators collide while rotating, then we decrease the height factor. However, if the concentrators are able to complete a full rotation without colliding, then we increase the height factor. After obtaining our concentrator, the next step is to simulate light collection. To do so, we assume that the sidewalls are perfect reflectors, so that the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. To determine light collection for three-dimensional concentrators, we use the Lani triangulation to determine the slope of the surfaces. This plot shows the simulated light collection of an example concentrator. As we can see, there are three different colors for the rays, each representative of a different type of behavior. The green rays are the ones which do not intersect the base and therefore are not collected. The red ones are the ones which intersect the base after bouncing off the sidewall exactly once. The blue rays bounce off the sidewall multiple times before being collected. After obtaining the light collection of our concentrators, we then calculated the concentration factor, or CF. This is a measure of how well the concentrator can collect light, as well as how well it can save on the cost of the semiconductor at the base. CF is determined by multiplying our light collection ratio with the area of the top of the concentrator, and then dividing by the area of the base. As a result, when our light collection ratio increases, the CF will increase as well. If the area of the top of the concentrator increases, meaning we can collect light from a wider area, the CF will also increase. However, if the base area increases, meaning that we need more semiconductor at the base, the CF will decrease. This slide shows an example of CF calculation for the case of using no concentrator, essentially using a flat solar panel. The number of rays collected will always equal the total rays, which results in a ray collection ratio of 1. Additionally, the top area and the base area are the same. As a result, the concentrator factor will be 1. This slide shows another CF calculation, this time with an example concentrator. This concentrator has a top area, which is twice as large as a base area. However, it only collects 80% of the incoming light. Multiplying these two numbers yields a CF of 1.6. This means that for a constant amount of semiconductor, using this concentrator will result in 1.6 times more light collected than not using any concentrator. Moving on to the results. We tested the effects of changing these parameters on the light collection ratio, top to base ratio, and concentration factor of different concentrators. As previously mentioned, the height factor is dependent on the other four parameters. We set the height factor to the maximum possible height where collision did not occur. Our first finding was that changing the parabola coefficient did not affect the light collection ratio or the top to base ratio, and therefore did not affect the concentration factor. This is likely explained by the fact that all parabolas are geometrically similar to each other. Therefore, the different concentrators obtained from different parabola coefficients are also similar to each other. Therefore, for the rest of the results, we tested the effects of the base position, 
parabola separation, and angle on the output variables. As seen in this graph, the x and y axes will be the base position and parabola separation, while the z axis is whatever output variable we are testing for. Each angle will have its own graph. This graph shows the light collection for an angle of 1, angle of 15, angle of 30, and angle of 45, the maximum angle we tested. We can see that all four of these graphs look pretty similar. However, as the angle increases, changes in parabola separation lead to greater changes in light collection. As a result, as the angle increases, the graphs appear to be more stretched out. Additionally, the light collection approaches a constant line value at 1 as the base position approaches 1. This makes sense because a base position of 1 corresponds to a flat concentrator, similar to a solar panel. This next set of graphs shows the top-to-base ratio. Note that the z-axis, the top-to-base ratio, is logarithmic. This is for an angle of 1, angle of 15, angle of 30, and angle of 45. We can see in these graphs that as the angle increases, changes in parabola separation lead to greater changes in top-to-base ratio, similar to light collection. Additionally, as the base position decreases, the top-to-base ratio increases. This makes sense, because decreasing the base position moves the base downwards, decreasing its length, while the length of the top remains constant. Additionally, at a base position of 1, corresponding to a flat concentrator, the top-to-base ratio is also a constant 1. These next slides show the concentration factor which is obtained by multiplying the light collection ratio with the top-to-base ratio. This is for an angle of 1, angle of 15, angle of 30, and angle of 45. We also see that as the angle increases, changes in parabola separation lead to greater changes in concentration factor. Additionally, at higher angles, the concentration factor is less sensitive to changes in separation. This slide shows the same graphs, but from a different view. From this angle, it is easier to see how separation affects the concentration factor. To summarize, this project proposed a square-based concentrator design to further increase ease of manufacturing three-dimensional concentrators. This was achieved using a cut and fold method. Additionally, the project analyzed different concentrators and how varying parameters would affect the concentration factor. The next steps involve looking at the same concentrators in three dimensions, which is more applicable to the real world. We will likely pinpoint and focus on the two-dimensional concentrators which have high concentration factor. Additionally, we will verify our results in the multi-physics software, such as COMSO. This concludes the presentation. I'd like to thank Professor Ku for his guidance and mentorship throughout the project, as well as the honors community for making this presentation possible. Lastly, I'd like to thank you for listening.